Hi, this is a video on uh, making a, uh, using the corporate model and and uh, keeping the debt to capital uh, ratio constant throughout. So, you know, it, uh, all I did was took our existing model and then we added in the future a, a fixed debt to capital ratio. Now in this video I will use the solver tool uh, to perform this and in a subsequent video we'll show you how you could uh, use just a little bit of algebra and do it in a, in a far more elegant way. Now if you're going to right now if we compute the debt to capital ratio its output Uh, the total debt divided by the capital. Uh, shift control five. I don't have this is an old version, so I don't have the shift control P in here. Control R. And what's happening? This remember, if it's this purple color, it's our history, and then we have a forecast. And in the forecast, the debt eventually goes down. Uh, because of the assumptions of cash flow and dividends and all that. So if we wanted to keep the debt to cash flow, the debt to capital constant, uh, after it says the reduction, after it says the dividends here, we could add a line, a new line. And mainly this is going to be a reduction, but we'll put add net equity capital issues. Okay, and this this line will be uh, this line will issue enough equity capital. So we'll if we have a negative number, this number will be smaller, and if this is a negative number, then the cash flow will be less, and we'll have to either have less reduction in debt or more uh, increases in uh, or less increases in debt if we have to borrow money. Okay, increased reductions in debt. Excuse me. Okay, and uh, so that's uh, that's that. Now let's put just below the debt to capital ratio. Let's put our target debt to to capital ratio. And again, we can. This one is is what I told you. Uh, that was entered. I didn't put anything for the first year. Okay, and that, uh, what we essentially want to do is in the future, so uh, in these future years, we're going to keep this constant. Just a minute. Okay, so, um, so there's our, and then we, we just compute the difference. And you can see that this is going to be like goal seek when we have when we need to have this difference set to be zero. And the way we'll get this difference to be zero is to change the uh, amount of equity capital issued, and we also need to adjust the uh, equity balance and add the new equity issues. Okay, so we'll just take that straight from our cash flow statement, excuse me, and then we'll modify this and add these. I suppose we can, it's appropriate to add them only really in the projected years because in the historic years, remember, we had a automatic balance. So this is, we could run a goal seek this year, this year, this year, this year, this year. Whenever you need multiple goal seeks, you can go to data and then and notice that I don't have the solver installed. That's kind of embarrassing, but you go to options, I think it's good, and then you go to add-ins and uh, press go. 
click on the solver, add in, press OK. okay. And here it is. Now if you go to data, there's the solver. And what we want to do now, this is a big problem, of course. Not of course, but uh, we almost should color this a different color. But if we would switch and have a uh, different projected period, we'd have a, we'd have to adjust this whole solver. We could put this. You can put this in a macro, by the way. I'm not going to do it now. Um, here's the way I like to do it. I like to keep up the, uh, the thing here. I don't know if you even have to put this. And then let's change. This is the this is the area we're going to change. We can't press Shift Control R, of course. We're going to change that, and we're going to add a constraint. And the only constraint we're going to add is that the difference down here. Where's our difference? This difference. There, I press Shift Control R. That difference should equal zero. Okay, and then we press OK and we simply run the solver. Okay. Whoops. You should definitely do that.
Oops. Okay, I think I just had switched it on and then I didn't switch it on properly. Ah, oh, shit. Uh, here we go. Um, damn videos. What a, you know what a pain this is to make. Uh, we have the new equity issues and we have none. But here, I'm going to switch it off. I'm repeating myself, I'm trying to remember what I told you just in the last video. Now if we go to data and solver, do you see how this thing is unclicked? You have to unclick this, what a pain. And then if you press solve, here's what's going to happen. It's a setting up a problem, one, two, three, four, five. Can you imagine if you're trying to make a whole lot of runs and... Uh, what you might be doing with this, uh, but you can see it takes it takes a whole lot of time. That's the problem. Now the solver found a solution and put negative numbers in. And if we go down to our debt to capital ratio, the difference in the debt to capital ratio is zero. Now sometimes you could have, we could have done this whole debt to capital ratio thing. We could have done this with the market value of equity and debt. We would have had to compute our free cash flow, our discounted value of our free cash flow, subtract the value of the debt to get the value of the equity, and then we could have uh, done the same thing. Now that will be in a subsequent video, not in this one. And the only thing I'm going to tell you right now is there's there are a whole lot of videos here. You know, if you want to see how to put all these together and do everything uh, in a in a structured manner, go to www.energyfinanceinstitute.com. That's my advertising. Okay, so the next video will be on how to make this with a uh, circular uh, reference uh, uh, solution.